We're going to cover another area that will be revision from paper F8, just to make sure that you still understand it. And that is the auditor's responsibilities regarding fraud at clients. Many people, especially outside of the business world and outside of the accountancy profession, assume that auditors are there to try to stamp out fraud at companies, or at the very least, find it and report it. However, strictly speaking, that is not really the case. Don't forget, as an external auditor, your job is to check whether the published financial statements are true and fair and to report this fact to the shareholders. And that's it. However, fraud, of course, is linked to the accuracy of the financial statements. Fraudulent transactions may well mean that the financial statements are not true and fair. So, clearly, there is a connection between the two things. So, what is the external auditor's responsibility for fraud? Well, quite simply, our responsibility is to give an opinion as to whether the financial statements are true and fair, that they are free from material mistakes. Whether those mistakes are accidents or deliberate, for example, fraud. The problem that we have is that many frauds are carried out with the involvement, or at least the knowledge, of directors. And if very senior people are involved, they can probably hide the fraud in such a way that the auditors would have no hope of spotting it. So in most countries, auditors do not have a legal responsibility to actually find fraud. All we have is a legal responsibility to do our best to try to find fraud. How can we put this into words? Well, auditors must plan their audit work in such a way as to maximise the chances of discovering any material fraud. Or in other words, you've got to try to find it. Whether you find it or not may well depend on how much the directors are involved and how well they've hidden it. How can we plan our audit to maximise the chance of finding fraud? Well, I suppose the starting point is to understand your client well enough so that you could understand how fraud could be carried out. If you've got no idea how it could be done, how on earth would you spot it? And what if you do spot a fraud or something that looks like it could be fraud? What do you do next? Well, if you think there is fraud going on at a company, you should go and tell the people responsible for running the company, the directors. But what if you believe that the directors are involved? Telling them is not really going to help, is it? Well, if you're auditing a listed company, there should be an audit committee made up of independent, non-executive directors. And since they're not involved in the day-to-day -day running of the company, it would be fairly difficult for them to be involved in a fraud. So if you're going to tell somebody, I suspect the audit committee would be the best place to start. In some situations, bear in mind you may have to report this fraud outside of the company. In some industries there will be regulators and it may well be that they have the law on their side and can force you to report externally. But as auditor, your main responsibility is to make sure that the board of directors knows. And generally, you'll go to the board of directors through the audit committee. That's as much as we're going to do on fraud, as it is a subject on paper F8, and again, you are meant to know it. And it doesn't come up too often on paper P7. It's fairly rare. We're going to take a look now at an area of the course which does not come up on the exam very often, but could within the area of current issues, and that is auditor liability. When it comes to liability, there are two main areas we need to focus on.
If auditors carry out their work in a negligent way, a low-quality way, you should expect that you're likely to have to pay compensation to somebody. The first question is, who? Who are we actually responsible to when carrying out an audit? Who could successfully sue us if we do it badly? And the second question is, how much could we be sued for? I mean, if someone lost a billion dollars and said it was because of our bad auditing, could we end up having to pay their entire one billion dollar losses? Two very important questions for the auditing industry. And we'll start off with the first one, to whom are we liable? Well, of course, we are employed by the shareholders. We report generally to the shareholders. So it should come as no surprise that auditors are going to be held liable to the shareholders if we get our audit work wrong. However, we could be held liable to others as well. Consider the following situation. You're standing on top of a tall building. Maybe it's lunchtime and you're enjoying the sunshine and getting some fresh air before going back to work. You're now aware that somebody else is also on top of the building. They've just appeared, just come up the stairs and come out onto the roof. Hello, they say, and hello, you say back. They now wander over towards the edge of the building and take a look down. They turn to you and say, what do you reckon? Do you think someone could jump off this building and survive? Intrigued, you go over to the edge of the building and look over. There's plenty of soft ground, trees, bushes, and if you aimed for those, you think you might be okay. And you say this to the other person. Yes, you say. I think you may well survive. To your horror, the person now jumps. They're horribly injured. And they decide to sue you for the bad advice you've given. Is this fair? Well, I would imagine you probably don't think it's fair at all. I mean, you're not a stuntman and you're not a medical advisor. So how are you to know if someone's going to survive or not? And anyway, you had no idea they were really going to jump. So it all sounds a bit unreasonable. Let's just change the story a bit, though. What if, same situation, you're on top of a tall building, someone else is now also on top of the building, they go over to the edge, and they say, hmm, what do you think? Would I survive if I jumped? But now they add the words because I'm really late for a meeting and I don't have time to go down the stairs. If you say you think I'll be okay if I jump, I'm going to jump. Now, the situation has changed a bit. What sounded like a jokey conversation has now turned deadly serious. If you say it's okay, it sounds like they're going to jump. Well, if you've got any sense, you'll say, I wouldn't if I were you. Or you'll just say, I'm not getting involved and refuse to give any advice. Because surely, now that you know that person's going to jump, if you give advice, you should be a little bit careful in what you say. But on the other hand, you're not a stuntman and you're not a medical advisor. So, do they have the right to rely on your advice when they jump? I mean, if they jump and get hurt, should they be suing you? I mean, surely it would have been better to get some better advice from a professional. Let's now change the situation even more. You're on top of a tall building. But now you're wearing a long white coat. And on the back it says, Professional Stuntman and Medical Advisor to people who jump off tall buildings. The person goes over to the edge and says, I'm thinking of jumping. Do you think it's safe? Well, naturally, if you now give advice this person surely has the right to rely on it. I mean, you're giving advice, the back of your coat says you know what you're talking about, and you know they're going to jump. So it seems reasonable. Let's now translate this rather odd story into the world of auditing. You are, of course, not standing on top of a tall building. You're checking whether the financial statements are true and fair and issuing a report. 
could you be held liable to anyone other than the existing shareholders to whom your report is addressed? I mean, one of the problems we have, I suppose, with audit reports is that the entire world could read them. They're a public document attached to the back of the financial statements, and these days, of course, typically on your client's website. So if somebody reads your report, your report says the financial statements are true and fair, they go and read the financial statements, which suggest the company's worth investing in, they invest in the company, the company goes bust, and they lose all of their money, can they sue you and claim that your audit work must have been negligent? Well, if you take the tall building example, let's look at the similarities. You had no idea that this person was going to make investment decisions based on your audit report. You didn't know. Now, you are an expert in auditing, but you're not necessarily an expert in investment advice. So, should people making investment decisions be allowed to rely on audit reports? That is a slightly debatable point. But don't forget, you did not know. As long as you don't know what someone's going to do, it seems a bit harsh for you to be held responsible for the fact that they've gone off and done it. So, in fact, the rules regarding auditors are fairly similar to the example that I gave you of standing on a tall building. This is how it works. As said before, we are liable to the shareholders who exist on the date that we sign the audit report because our report is for them. Plus, we could be held liable to anybody else if all of the following are true. So, if you give advice to people to jump off buildings, you know that if you say jump, they're likely to jump. If you're an expert in jumping off buildings, and if you didn't check properly when looking over the edge and should have realised it was going to hurt them, and they now jump and get hurt, the chances are they can sue you, and the chances are they're going to win and you're going to lose. In terms of audit... Auditors are liable to the shareholders, and if at the point you sign an audit report, you know that other people are going to read that report, you know what their plans are, you know they're likely to rely on your opinion, you do bad quality audit work, and they end up losing money, chances are they're going to sue you, and they're going to win. But... If you're now getting concerned that you might know of lots of people who are planning to rely on your audit report, I have some good news. Please bear in mind that in theory, with audit reports being publicly available documents, the entire world could write to you and say, next time you finish the audit of this company, we're going to do this and place reliance on your opinion. And you can't be held liable to the whole world. Surely no one would be an auditor. It would be professional suicide. 
The fact is, none of these other people are paying you any fees. Surely they cannot be allowed to place reliance on you. The easy way out of this is to issue a disclaimer. Issue a disclaimer to anybody else apart from the shareholders and you're covered. So if you are on top of a tall building and you don't want to be held liable to anyone jumping off who asks your advice as to whether you think they'll be okay, either don't give any advice or when you give the advice, tell them you hereby disclaim all responsibility if they get hurt. And I'd put that in writing if I were you, just to make sure there's proof that you did it. So, it should be possible to avoid being held liable to anybody except the shareholders. Or is it? I mean, if you know someone is relying on your audit opinion, send them a disclaimer. Easy. But what if you don't know? But should have known? What if there is a document that tells you that someone's going to rely and you're meant to have read that document, but you missed that paragraph where it said this. A judge could decide that you should have known that they were going to rely. This has made audit firms very nervous. What if we're held liable because a judge says we should have known, but because we didn't know, we didn't issue a disclaimer to them? As such, audit firms in some countries, especially Britain, have come up with a cunning tactic. How can we issue disclaimers to people reading the audit report if we don't know who those people are? Simple solution, put the disclaimer in the audit report so that anyone reading that report who is not a shareholder is removed from this list of people to whom you could be held liable. In many ways it's a fairly simple solution and in the UK those disclaimers have been going into audit reports ever since around about 2001-2002. Whether they actually work legally might be another matter. And it also raises another interesting question. If you read an audit report which basically says the accounts are true and fair, but don't try and sue us if we're wrong, which is basically what these disclaimers say, although they say it in rather more legal language, might you get a little nervous that because the auditors are so scared of being sued, they're not exactly that sure that the accounts are true and fair. I mean, if you drove into a car park and parked your car, and up on the wall it said any damage to your car or theft from your car is not the responsibility of the management of the car park, are you not just a little nervous that they've only put that sign up because cars in this car park get damaged and broken into? If you're now more nervous about the quality of the car park and how safe it is, well, if auditors are writing this, might it reduce people's assurance as to the accuracy of the accounts? Some countries have reacted against these disclaimers being put in audit reports and think that they undermine the value of those audit opinions, the United States being one example. I should also point out that the ACCA is not very happy about this move in auditing and would prefer its members not to do it. Well, that's taken a look at to whom auditors are liable. The shareholders, as it's their company's profits that are paying your fees, and they are the people you report to, and you could become liable to anybody else. We saw the terms and the rules involved, but the good news is you can issue a disclaimer and avoid everybody except the shareholders. The next question we need to look at, how much might you have to pay if you're held to be liable? And is there anything we can do to reduce that amount?